I think the universe is absolutely and utterly giving. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out? Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. That's what you deserve, you're a fucking loser. Because if you actually wanted it, and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. You want a fucking Ferrari, you can have it. You want that bitch, you can have her. You can have anything you want on the planet. There's not a girl I look at that I want that I can't have. Not one. That's my reality. There's not a car I can't have, there's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have, at a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. Like I've, I've achieved this amazing life and I've tried very, very hard, but it could have been harder. I mean, was it that hard? About 86% hard. It wasn't 100% hard. Why? Because the competition's zero. Everyone is a fucking loser. It's amazing to me. Everyone's a loser. I can say to somebody, listen, I'll make you a millionaire. Do this. Oh, yeah, but you know, the kids are home from school now. <laughs> That's it. They're done. And then they'll sit and go, oh, I really wish I had some money. You are a loser. I will sit here on this podcast. People will listen to me for hours. And I will say, listen, I have hundreds of millions of dollars and I will teach you how to make money. CobraTake.com, I have a school, university designed specifically to teach you how to make money. I clearly know how to make money. You clearly like what I say. You obviously believe I'm intelligent and integral and I won't lie to you. And still, a whole bunch of people will sit there and go, hmm, yeah, anyway, next video. And then they'll say, can't afford a Ferrari and wonder why. Like they'll be confused in their minds how they didn't end up getting what they want. Because you're a fucking loser. Lo that's why. And, and the majority of people are losers. And this is goes back to why, when we were saying earlier, how I know the elites view us. Because I'm from a council estate in Luton, a single parent household. And I've only been rich 10 years or so. And I despise losers. So imagine you're a billionaire born into a family, a lineage which has controlled Earth for hundreds of years. Imagine how much they despise us. Do you think they give a fuck about putting a bullet in me? Do you think they're gonna have any sleep at night missed? Do you think they give a solitary fuck about you missing your fucking parents' funeral because of the common cold? They don't give a solitary shit. Why would they? Because I already know how I feel when I listen to losers complain. Because this is what happens at a certain level of competence and power. You just get to a point where you're like, I'm tired of hearing your fucking excuses. That's bullshit. And you become to a degree, yeah, cold and psychopathic. It's true. That's what happens. And I get it all the time. I get thousands of emails a day. Everyone I grew up with, people I know, I get it all the time. They'll message me, hey man, you know, just unlucky. You are not unlucky. You are a lazy fucking loser. That's, that's you are not unlucky. You are breathing. You're lucky. The unlucky ones are gone. You're alive and you are a lazy loser. So a loser is anybody who does not have everything they want at the drop of a hat. That's who I call a loser. Because I have absolutely everything I could ever possibly desire. And if I wanted something that I couldn't have, I guarantee you, you can speak again in a few months and I'm fucking happy. I guarantee you. Because if I want something and I can't have it, I can't sleep. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. I don't know how there's broke people out here sleeping just fine at night. Going, oh, you know, inflation's 
gas prices are six times, everything on the news is a lie, I never stand a chance of ever getting rich, where's my pillow? Like, what the, f what the fuck is wrong with you people? I, I go to bed at night as a teenager and think, I looked it up on the internet. It was a Honda Civic Type R. I wanted one, it was like 38,000 pounds. I had no money, I had less than 50 pounds on my bank account, couldn't afford it. Then I looked up how much a Ferrari cost, 210,000 pounds. And I said to Tristan, my cup brother, I was like, there are people with 210,000 pounds for a car. And he's like, yes, so? I'm like, no, no, not so. How? If I worked my job for six years, and saved every penny. If I walked to work and didn't eat, I couldn't buy this car. How are people doing this? I couldn't sleep at night when I was broke. I knew that everything was a lie. I knew the matrix was lying to me. I knew I had to find a way out. I was sitting there going, I refuse to live my human years and be some second class citizen peasant when there's people out here who get to do whatever the fuck they want. I, I couldn't tolerate it. And I was so uncomfortable that it gave me the motivation I needed to escape. But the people who go, oh yeah, nice Ferrari, yeah. Back to the TV. Dummies, losers. And the thing about the world is, we need losers. I, I'm not mad at losers. If that's the reality you've chosen to live, you get one spin in this version of life, and you decide you want to be a loser, that's fantastic, because I like, I need, my cars need cleaning, you know? My hotel room needs cleaning. I have a party with all these beautiful women that's a bit of a mess. Please, go pick it up. Somebody needs to do that shit. I ain't gonna fucking do it. If I had to walk into a hotel room and clean up after some other man's party, I guarantee you I'd do whatever it fucking took to become rich so I didn't have to do that shit anymore. But you wanna do that for 20 years? Thanks, friend. <laughs> Someone's gotta flip the fucking burgers. Someone has to make the fries. I want a happy meal now and again. But I don't feel sorry for you people because you fucking deserve it. Because it's a decision you made. You made that decision. If you're sitting at home and you say, I don't want to be a loser, you know what to do. I told you how to escape the matrix. CobraKitTape.com. You can join. I'll teach you. But if you're going to sit there and go, nah, maybe this guy with hundreds of millions of dollars is trying to scam me out of 25 pounds. All right, smart ass. Have fun at McDonald's. Get fucked. I have no sympathy for these people. Zero. Do you have a little bit of a system you can share on how to make money i know we've got cobratate.com we'll yeah. keep shouting it out but any tips for someone who's ready yeah but they don't yet know the how completely so we teach it inside of the real world of course i keep mentioning it because it's so important but there are three keys i believe to making money the word of the day first one's perspicacity most people go through life and they do not pay attention I've said this before and I want to stick by it because it's so important. You need to pay attention to every single time you spend money because you cannot make money. You're not the Federal Reserve, you're not a government. Governments make money. All of us take money from somebody else or a business or a government. We take money from other things. So the easiest way to learn how to get good at taking money is to pay attention to every time someone takes money from you. So next time you buy a coffee, don't just buy the coffee and drink it and think nothing of it, like every brokey. Don't do that. Say, okay, I, why am I buying this coffee? Okay, I want the coffee. All right, why am, I, why am I buying here? Well, this is on my way to work. Is there any competition around? Do I also want breakfast? Do they sell breakfast? No, they don't sell breakfast. They can probably make some more money if they're selling breakfast. Anyway, I walk in, there's a long line. Why is there one member of staff? I'm low on time. I'm about to leave and not buy the coffee. They're about to lose money because it's taking too long. Most of the people in this line are businessmen. Why is there not a cute girl behind the counter? I bet if they paid a cute girl a little bit more, they'd still make a bunch more money because people come in here to talk to her. Think. And then you, what you'll do is, as you go through life, every time you spend money, is you'll realize the problem is not how to make money. The problem is how much time you have because there's endless business ideas. There's endless ideas. I walk into a coffee shop and by the time I've walked out, I already know exactly how to open up next door and outcompete them head to toe. I already have worked out how much is the rent, how, where are they fucking up, what are they not selling that they should be selling? What are they doing good? What are they doing bad? This chair is too hard. I'll wreck them. And I'll send it. And now my network is so powerful, which is the second point network, I can send a few messages on WhatsApp and make a bank transfer. And two months later, there's a brand new coffee shop next door with my name on it, put them out, put them out of business. So the first thing is you have to pay attention. Because if you pay attention, you'll start to learn that money is everywhere. Every building is owned. These are skyscrapers. Billion, 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 billions. Every apartment nowadays is a million. 
million, million. You drive down a street in London, you're driving past trillions of dollars. There's money everywhere. It's all around us. When I was broke, I thought that the world was broke. I thought that there was no money. And then I got rich and realized that I was completely and utterly wrong. There's so much money. It's everywhere. If I go to try and buy a plane or a jet, they're always sold out. My yacht is a fucking six year waiting list. I want a Bugatti, they launch it, the email comes to my email address, two minutes later, gone. Like there's so much money. If I want a diamond watch or a million dollar watch or a million dollar Rolex, you can't get this stuff. There is so much money out there. Once you get to a certain echelon, you realize there's money fucking everywhere. So there's plenty of money in the world. People with no money are just not very good at taking it. So you need to start paying attention. It's the first thing. Second thing is network. It's hard to make money if you don't know anybody who has money. If you sit in a room full of ice cream experts and all they talk about is ice cream, how to make ice cream, the different flavors, how to store it, how to move it, how to sell it. Even by accident, if you hang around with these people long enough, when someone asks you a question about ice cream, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna know the answer. You're gonna say, you know what? That's because it's pistachio and that needs to be two degrees higher than chocolate. And you're gonna look like a smart ass. So if you sit in a room full of people who are making a bunch of money, Everyone understands this. Your network is your network. You're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody understands this. And then they still hang around with fucking losers. Because they're dummies. You're right. I am the sum of the five people I spend the most time with. Anyway, this is my friend Nick. He's so funny when we go drinking because he gets really drunk. <laughs> losers. I don't talk to anybody who is not winning. Everybody whose phone, uh, every phone call I will answer, if I answer a phone call, it is from a winner. I don't talk to losers. Everyone I talk to is rich. Everyone I talk to is making money. Everybody. If my entire reality is full of multimillionaires making money, how am I not gonna make money? And this is why network is so important is because it's the same reason that wolves hunt in packs. If you're a lone animal, you have one set of eyes. But if you're a pack, you're watching every single angle, every single side. Perhaps I might miss something. I'm as perspicacious as possible. But one of my friends identifies that the war in Ukraine is gonna change and the Russian ruble is gonna pump. You can make a bunch of money on a forex trade, for example. I may not have noticed, but he'll notice. Now I've made a bunch of million dollars to get a text message, right? Hmm. Because I have friends who are paying attention. All of us are paying attention. So your network is super important, that's another thing. We'll go into this, because I have something called The War Room, which is also on corporatetake.com, i let people read for themselves. But that's my private network, and we specifically talk about money, and, and a few other things. But that's is that like more like a mastermind? It's it's the real world's how to make money and the war room's what to do with money, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's all on corporate.com. I don't want to get off track, but it's there. But second is network. And third is to identify the reason why you don't have as much money as you want so far. And there's one of three reasons. You are either lazy, stupid, or arrogant. Those are the only three reasons anyone is poor. And you have to identify and choose which one it is. The majority of people are not the one they think they are. The majority of people are the one I'm about to say at the end. So let's start with lazy. There are a lot of lazy people. The unfortunate reality about money is that you are competing. So it's player versus player. It's like anything in the world. If you want that beautiful girl, so does everyone else. You have to win the competition. You want that car, you have to get it first. You want that money, everyone wants that money. You have to compete. It's competitive, business is competitive. You are competing against people like me. You're competing against people like the people in my network. You're competing about people who only talk about money, who understand money very well, who operate in jurisdictions all around the planet, who are extremely well connected, who know things before you know them, who have mass influence and mass power and mass resource. You're competing against me. This is what you must understand. You're not waking up going, I want to make some money. You're competing against people like me. You're competing against billionaires. You're competing against hedge funds. How do these hedge funds keep growing? Where are they getting that money from? From the brokies. They're robbing you. They're robbing all the poor people from the pension fund, dummy. That's where they get it from. This is who you're competing against. So the competition is absolutely and utterly fierce. Understanding that, understanding that you're a man with a small pistol up against a mighty army. If you want to add a little bit of laziness on top, you're fucked. So when I say people are lazy, they go, I'm not lazy. I work hard every day. You work eight hours a day? You work eight, eight? The fuck? If I'm awake, I'm working. I'll be driving my Bugatti Chiron through Dubai, working. I'm texting at the same fucking time. I don't take a second off. I don't take a minute off. 
I don't relax, I don't rest, I don't stop, I don't chill, none, ever. I'm either asleep or at work, that's it. Second I wake up, I check my phone, I begin working. I go to the gym in between sets, I am working. I'm online working the entire fucking day until the second I go to sleep, I am at work. That is all I do. And you are at home competing against me and you want to watch a movie tonight and then say you're not lazy. You're fucking lazy and you're gonna lose forever. That's laziness. Next is stupid. I don't think many people are actually too stupid to be rich. You can be below average IQ and still get very rich. Very, a very small percentage of people are too dumb to be rich. The slave minds, they'll never be rich because the matrix tries to keep you poor because when you're poor, you can't think like we talked about earlier. So everything the media tells you is designed to make you poor. They want you broke and struggling because if you rely on the government for food stamps, then you can't argue with the government, can you? So that's what they want. So anyone who believes in the matrix and believes in media and believes in the lies they're told, anyone who sits there and goes, that's true, that it's literally designed to make you broke. That's why it's all a scam. Do your GCSEs, do your A-levels, get in debt, go to uni, get out, get a shit job, get a mortgage. Don't worry, when you've paid that mortgage off when you're 61, then you'll have enough money to go to Spain for holiday. Then your pension comes. Oh, government doesn't have the pension money anymore. Funny enough, hedge fund stole it. Pay half your money in your life in tax. Oops, de doops. <laughs> and then you wake up one day and go, whoa, I just got fucked. So the whole scam, the whole story is a lie because they want you broke. <laughs> they don't want you rich. If you're rich, you won't listen to them. So all of it's a fucking lie. And intrinsically, we all know this, right? If I, when I pull up in one of my 30 cars to a gas station and people look at me and they see a Lambo or a Ferrari or a Bugatti or a Koenigsegg, whatever I'm driving, nobody goes, wow, he went to school. No, they think drug dealer, gangster. They're thinking, they're thinking he broke the rules because anyone who follows the rules doesn't get shit. It's all a scam. It's all a fucking lie. So the slave minds are fucked, but those are the only ones who are too stupid to make money. Anybody who understands that the matrix is lying to them is smart enough. So very few, very small percent are too stupid. Inside of our school, at the height of it, before the matrix attack, we're relaunching now. We had 175,000 students. Wow. When we had 175,000 students. Maybe 2,000 we kicked out for being too stupid. It's step by step. Do this, do that, do this, and don't be lazy. The fuck? It's not that hard, right? So stupid's not the problem. So we have people who are lazy, very few are stupid, but the majority, the main reason most people are broke is because they are arrogant. I will sit here and say all the things I've said. I will do this, take time out of my life for free. Somebody at home will watch and digest it for free. They will agree with the things that are being said or at least be entertained enough to continue to watch. And then I'll say, I'll teach you how to make money online. CobraTape.com, you can join the real world. And they'll sit there and go, nah, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. They have these egos from fuck knows where because they didn't earn it. And they're just too arrogant to listen to anybody. I became world champion by listening to my coach. I didn't become world champion by walking in and saying, I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's not how you get anywhere in life. You have to listen. If, if Mike Tyson were to walk in, or if Elon Musk were to walk in here and talk to me about money, I wouldn't be sitting there going, I can do that. I'd be like, oh, Mr. Elon, richest man in the world. Hello, very nice to meet you. Please, even though I already understand I don't want to launch a car brand or put rockets in space, please, you must know some things I don't know. How do you deal with the currency fluctuations? Does it does, does inflation impact how much it costs for you to send a rocket into space? Like, I'll ask him something that's useful, right? But so, some people are so brutally arrogant that they'll sit here and they'll listen to all the things I said, and they'll agree that I'm intelligent, and they'll agree I'm massively successful, but they'll sit there and go, yeah, but you know what? I'll, I'll do it myself. I don't want to join that school because you know, I'll, just do, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. Everybody's fucking arrogant. I sit with people who I used to go to school with from Luton who are still broke and tell them how to make money. And you know what they do? They answer back. Yeah, but you know, it's not that simple because you know, the wife gets the kid, da, 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 and you know what, and I, I don't like to do things that way, the way I like to work. The way you like to work is why you're fucking broke. So what the fuck are you talking about? You just sat here and wasted 10 minutes of my time. I told you how to take your business, or painting and decorating, or whatever the fuck you're doing, and make a serious amount of money, and now you're telling me the way you like to work? Then stay fucking broke. The fuck you want me to do? What level of arrogance? But this is people. 
They'll sit with a multimillionaire and tell you their view. Oh, I think that the... Know when you're out qualified and accept it and learn. So we all do. I'm not gonna get, I can't play piano for shit. The piano teacher walked in here and said, this is what you do and I said, well, I like to move my hands this way. What kind of dumbass? But this is the, this is the arrogance people operate under. So I'd say 20% of people are lazy, 20 to 25%. A large portion of the world are not lazy. They're actually working exceptionally hard, but they're doing the wrong thing. 5% of people are too stupid. So say 25%, 5% is 30%. But 70% of people are brutally arrogant. And this is why they are poor. That's the truth. You need to live like God is always watching. You may wow. have the opportunity to do something bad or you may have the opportunity to steal some money or snake somebody, but in the end, you're gonna pay for that and the bill will be paid. Mm -hmm. I think if you do the right thing, in my experience, if you're a person who does the right thing, firm handshake, is on time, doesn't lie to anybody, does what he's supposed to do, is honest with a good heart, is genuinely polite to everyone he meets. If you are that person, you get very far in life. I have I've yet to meet people who just do all the simple things right, who completely fail at life. But I've met a lot of people who snake or steal some money and they get really rich, then they lose it all, or they get rich and end up a gambling addict or depressed or etc. So you have to just, understand that God is always watching. He's going to reward you in the end. That's the first thing. And the second thing I will say is that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and you need to create your reality. I think the biggest problem with young people today is that they don't create their realities heavily enough. The people that they want to spend most time with aren't adding any value to their lives and then they end up wondering why they don't get you. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. When people, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're going to end up like. They say, yeah, that's true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be. Why? You have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I want a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. If you were to come hang out with me and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. Right. You don't feel so with your friends. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you, or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. If you walk through life and feel like you have nothing to prove, you're a loser. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Then you are a loser because you are absolutely not the incorrect. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to your bloodline. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man. You have to build who you are. God loves to see that. Those people for some reason seem to be enormously lucky, right? The person who goes, I don't have to prove anything to God. I don't owe all of my ancestors any effort. You know, for 5,000 years, people were dodging saber-toothed tigers and catching the plague and running from Genghis Khan just for my stupid ass to be born. I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them a thing, because I want to play video games. These people are losers. You should walk through Earth with force inside of you. If I walk, as I walked into this hotel reception, everybody, not because they know who I am, but because as I move, even if, even if it's behind their head, people feel something. It's, it's an energy that comes from brutal competence. That's what happens when a predator walks in a room. You pay attention next time you're in a restaurant. If a man who's truly dangerous walks in, nearly every other man kind of looks up at the same time. Feel it. You need to or you don't survive. We've evolved with that to live. That's who I am. I couldn't imagine not being that man. I've done that because I've been trying to prove myself to my lineage my entire life. I wake up every day with something to prove. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. I wake up a day more. I'm in fantastic shape, four times world champion, fighting the matrix out here by myself more. I will have to be braver. I must try harder. I, all I do is prove myself. So when I hear people go, I don't have nothing to prove, then you're a loser. Peasants have never felt like they needed to prove anything. 
but kings felt like they needed to go and conquer land. Isn't that co it's coincidental that the king, who already had it all, felt like he needed to go to some far-flung land and conquer it and take it and prove he's the king? But the peasants, oh, I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You're a loser. You're a dummy. I absolutely and utterly, completely have everything to prove to everybody all the time. That's who I am. I will prove anything to anybody. If I sit and say X, I will prove it to anyone. I can be checked anytime. And their ancestors who fought in saber-toothed tigers or escaped the, the Mongol hordes or managed to dodge bombs in the Second World War. All the shit they went through just for this f***ing cretin to be born. And to look at him, look at who he is, listen to his life story, listen to what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, and they would feel nothing but f***ing shame. Your ancestors did all that all that struggling to survive, hunting, hunting and gathering, avoiding enemies, anything it took, dying at age 30 from a tooth infection, all the crap they went through just for you to be born so you could smoke weed and jack off. That's what your ancestors died for. That's what they worked so hard for. That's who you are. That's the end of your fucking bloodline. Do you feel no shame? It's fucking shameful. My ancestors will look at me and think everything we went through was fucking worth it. Your ancestors will look at most of these people, their ancestors will look at them and feel nothing but fucking disgust. Well, I guarantee you, even their fucking living relatives, their living parents aren't even proud of them. Like the fuck? Your own father's ashamed of you. And you don't even feel fucking motivated to do fucking. It's a fucking shame. If you were to go and look your father in the eye and said, you know what, I could have been a fucking, I could have been a UFC champion. I could have been a, a multimillionaire. I could have been a race car driver. I could have been a fucking nuclear physicist. could have done all these things, but I was busy on fucking. You think he's going to be proud of you? No. No. And, and there's men here who will deny it, right? There's men who will go, no, 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 no. But those are the ones who are most lost. And they should look in the mirror, look deep in their own eyes and say, yes, I'm fucking disgusting. I can change this. That's the beauty about being a man. If you're disgusting, you can change it. That's the beauty. There's nothing stopping you changing it. Right. And you must accept it. You must accept it first. Most of these people, what they do is they hang around with other disgusting people, and then they're a the little group of disgusting people, and they think, well, I'm not disgusting, everyone's disgusting, and this is normal, and it's normal to be a fucking goth. Not in my world, it isn't. It's not, it's not, it's not normal to be a fucking jerk off in my world. It's the things, it's the denial that's going to hold you back the most. The people who go, yes, I'm wasting my potential. Those are the ones who have potential. The ones who stand up and go, I am wasting my potential. I could be anything, and I am not that yet. They have a chance. The men who go, well, no, actually, I'm fine. They're they're inside the matrix, fully slave minded. They're a waste of time. But if you sit there and go, you know what? Yeah, I am wasting my potential. Yes, I can be more than I am. Even if I'm already great, I can be better. As good as I am, I still I still push myself to the limit every single day. I have every single thing a man could possibly want. I'm still pushing myself. This is your prerogative as a man. But you need to be instilled with a sense of duty, duty to your bloodline. You must want it you need to want it deep inside your soul i can't die as anything less than emperor it's it's my destiny there are duties that men must fulfill whether to god or to your bloodline if i feel extremely happy and excited i'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard if i feel absolutely depressed and distraught i'm going to use that as endless energy and motivation to do amazing things and work hard it doesn't matter what you give me energy cannot be destroyed it can only be converted and transferred it doesn't matter what fuel you give me if you give me diesel petrol kerosene vodka it doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine hard work is going to come out absolutely success. that's all i know how to do making the best move on the chessboard regardless of how losing your position is is a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're f***ed. But still, regardless of how f***ed you are, there's still a best move. There's always a best move and a worse move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of ten, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of ten, the best move might be just enough to save your ass. And on a long enough time frame, if you play the game repeatedly, day after day, taking risks, always making the best move regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. You might end up somewhere near me. You might have dinner one day. You might stop being a brokey. You might stop being a loser. If your girl leaves you, the best move on the board perhaps is to go to the gym, perhaps is to send her flowers, perhaps is to never text her again. Well, you should make the best move on the board regardless.
Even if you don't want her back, you should still make the best move. You should always think that way. What move will give me the best possible strategic position? That's how you think. That's how I think. Best move on the board is how you should approach your life. Next time you're in a situation, you should sit and say, okay, this is a bad situation. I'm What's the best move I could possibly make? What's the outcome I would like? What's the most likely move to give me that particular outcome? And you'd be surprised what some of them are. I had a guy email me the other day saying he lost his job. And he was the worst salesman. Well, then you deserve to lose your job. That's how sales works. It's, it's fearsome. He goes, well, I don't know. What should I do? I said, what's the best move on the board? He goes, well, I really want the sales job. I think I can get good at it. I said, well, then work for free. So do you have another job yet? He said, no. Okay, while you're applying for other jobs, instead of sitting around on your, on your ass at home, keep working for free for the company for two or three weeks and see if you can turn it around. And he tried that. And he couldn't because he's shit at sales. But the point is, if he would have sat at home doing nothing, it wouldn't have helped him. The best move on the board was to try and prove to his company that he's actually worth something. If he was worth something, in those two or three weeks, he might have turned around and got his job back. He still got to apply for new jobs. He didn't lose anything. Best move on the chessboard. That's how I want you to approach your life, ladies and gentlemen. It's the mental model in which you should apply to scenarios to deduce what is the best possible action. Because if you're always making the best move and very rarely making the worst move, it's pretty hard to lose. It's player versus player out here. The world is about winners and losers and everyone is competing against each other. You are competing against me, I'm competing against you, you're competing against your friend. You, and you're competing against your enemies. You want a dollar, so does everyone else. You want that hot girl, so does everyone else. You want that house, so does everyone else. What's amazing is the things you want, the main reason you want them is because other people want them. So you can show off that you have it and they don't. It is competition. Kind of like the age old adage, if a tiger's chasing 10 people, you don't have to be the fastest. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy. Because he's fucked. So considering that a lot of people are constantly making the wrong moves, if you can just start to make the right moves most of the time, you'll see exactly how easy life can be. I don't even want your energy around me. Because quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. You can give a, it doesn't matter what it is. If you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack fucking table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. He'll look at it and it's just long. And he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. People say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. Well, I'm going to sit here and once again explain to you how different the world is when you have a mind which isn't warped and affected easily by outside influences. You are never going to become a robot. This has nothing to do with not feeling emotions. This has nothing to do with just becoming an empty, emotionless void of a person. That's not what this is. This is about understanding that you're a human being. You're going to feel emotions. This is a beautiful thing and making sure that you use them in the correct way. A, and B, you do not ever let them stop you doing what you're supposed to do. I say to people often, I haven't felt like going to the gym in two years. I'm wearing my gym clothes right now. I just finished training. I haven't felt like training in two years. I, after 10 years of professional fighting, after giving my life to exercise, genuinely, I have not woke up and felt like, oh, I really want to train. I haven't felt that way in a long time. That's why I retired from fighting but I have still gone and I have still trained regardless of how I feel. So this is one of the tenets, and there's gonna be a lot of things you're gonna learn of an iron mindset. It's the ability to not let your feelings affect you and sometimes to do the complete opposite of how you feel because you're not gonna very often feel like working hard. You're not gonna always feel like doing the right thing. You're not always going to be motivated. The idea that you need to be constantly motivated shows how weak your mindset is. I don't need motivation to go to the gym. I cannot want to go with every fiber of my being. I will still be there because I use my cerebral ability. I use my mind and I logically decide what I'm going to do with my day, regardless of how I feel, regardless of whether I'm motivated or not, because that's all life is. And that's all the world is. Life is just getting things done, doing the right things, doing the important things, making sure they're done efficiently and thoroughly so that you live the best possible life. It's as simple as that. It's not particularly complicated. I'm not going to be, and I don't want to be one of those guys who's like motivation, inspirational, that I've never been one of them people. 
I don't believe in motivation, inspiration. I don't believe in that crap. I don't believe that you need motivation to get things done. I'm not going to sit here and just talk a whole bunch of motivational things to make you feel good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the things I always did that allowed me to put together the mindset I currently have. So if you look at any story, literally any story with a hero in it, they all have one thing in common. And that thing is that there's always a villain. You cannot have a hero without a villain. It doesn't matter. You can think of any superhero, any comic book, any, any book you can think of, any movie. There's always a good guy and there's a bad guy. So for the good guy to exist, there has to be a bad guy. There's no other way for the duality of the universe to continue without this basic tenet. So you want to be the good guy in your story. You want, and in every, I've said this before actually, as a man, life is going to be difficult. It's more difficult than being a woman. It's more difficult than anything else. So it's very easy to see yourself. Life is actually easier as a whole if you see yourself as a hero. Because in every single hero story, the hero suffers. He has a hard time. And if you understand that you're suffering because you're a hero, then the suffering begins to make sense. So you can be sitting here right now and go, my woman doesn't respect me. Uh, I have no money in the bank. This is difficult. I, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. You can feel sorry for yourself or you can say, yeah, my woman doesn't respect me. I'm struggling. I can't make money. But you know what? That's because that's I'm a fucking superhero and my life's going to be hard because I'm a man. And as a hero, it's going to be difficult. These are the tests and the trials and tribulations I have to go through to become someone. Every single male superhero went through a whole ton of before he became superhero. You've seen the Batman movies. He was, his parents died. He was, he was locked up in jail. All these bad things happen and then they emerge as the hero. And this is done for a reason because it's the reality of life, especially as a man. So right now you have to understand that you're the hero in this movie. And if you're struggling, you're struggling for a very important reason. And how you handle these struggles and how you deal with these struggles are going to decide the kind of person you're going to be afterwards. You're either going to be a superhero or you're going to succumb to them and you're going to fail. So be happy that you're struggling because that's important. That's the first thing. Second thing is there has to be a villain. Now, most people think their villain is someone else. You see this all the time. The villain's the opposite of the hero. So if you're sitting at home and you haven't got much money and you're, and you're broke and you're pissed off and you're depressed and you look at me and I have four supercars and all these girls, I'm traveling the world, I go everywhere I want, you may think I'm your villain. People look at other people and say, oh, that guy has this, this guy has this, and they become envious. They think that's the villain. That's not true. That's not the case because every single person has different circumstances. There are things you have that I don't have and there's things I have that you don't have. So I may have had a genetic gift over you, for example, because I'm a, a fantastic kickboxer, but you may have been born more wealthy than me. I was born in a very, very poor family. So I had advantages and disadvantages. You had advantages and disadvantages. So comparing yourself to other people is, is asinine and it's a name because it's not a level fair playing ground. There are some people who are born to millionaire parents who are gorgeous, model, good looking and have six packs without trying. Some people are lucky like that. That's just how it is. So comparing yourself to these people is not going to help you. Your villain is nobody else. Your villain is someone you're going to create. And you're going to create your villain because he's going to motivate you to be the most powerful hero you can possibly be. So you're going to create your villain. And this is the task for the first week. This is a six-week training course. And over each week, you have a very important task. And the task for this week is to create your villain. To make sure that there was no disadvantages involved, your villain is going to be a clone of you. But what your villain is going to have is he's going to have some things you don't have. And your villain is going to be the person who basically without requirement for motivation, without requirement, without being, no matter how he feels that day, no matter how stressed he is from work, regardless of what happens to him, your villain's gonna be the guy who always does exactly what he wants to do. So your villain's gonna be the guy who goes to the gym regardless of how he feels. Your villain's gonna be the guy who approaches every beautiful girl he ever sees and says, hey, I, I really think you're beautiful. Goes over to him and talks to him. Your villain's gonna be the guy who asks for a raise at work. Your villain's gonna be the guy who does everything he wants, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's not motivated or not, regardless if he's shy to talk to that girl or people are watching or his ankle hurts, he doesn't wanna to go to the gym, whatever. Or his boss is, he thinks his boss is gonna fire him. Your villain is that dude who does anything he wants to do. You have to sit and you have to make a list of all the things. You have to sit there and say, if I did everything I wanted to do, if I were to be the best version of myself possible, what would I do? Okay, well, I'd go to the gym every day. I'd get up at 6 a.m. and I'd go to the gym every day. You write that down. My villain is the kind of guy who reads very really important books. I'm, I, I say I don't have time, but my enemy, this villain, he reads books. He finds time. He doesn't watch TV ever. He doesn't waste time ever. He doesn't eat junk food. He reads books. Write it down. And you have to make a list. Now, this list at first should be easy for you, but then you're going to get to about seven or eight things and you're going to stop. No, this list needs to be 25 to 30 points long, minimum. This guy you're building, your arch nemesis, you have to write down every single quality about this guy. What he does, he goes to the gym every day, 6 a.m. 
he doesn't watch TV, he doesn't eat junk food, he goes up to beautiful girls, etc, etc, etc. 25 or 30 points long. Because this is going to become your enemy for the next six weeks of training. You want to become a hero, you need someone to battle against. This is who you're battling against. You're battling against a better version of yourself, a version of yourself that doesn't succumb to how he feels, but does what he's supposed to do anyway. So this is who your villain's going to be. And when you're writing down this list, all the qualities your villain has, imagine what this person looks like. You have to put genuine effort into this. You have to imagine what he looks like, imagine how he walks, imagine how he talks, imagine what people think when they see him. Imagine how different you would be if you had been going to the gym every single day for an hour and a half, every single day for the last two, three, four years. Imagine it. Imagine how differently people would look at you. Imagine how differently females would, would treat you if you were jacked like that guy would be. You have to sit and you have to put down all these qualities and then once the qualities are there, 25 or 30 minimum, then you have to imagine what kind of person this is. You have to imagine what he looks like, what he talks like, what he thinks like. Imagine how he views the world because this is who you're going to be battling against. So you have to put genuine effort into constructing this person and understanding this person. The reason I'm saying do this is because this is what motivates me every single day. When I was training for a fight, the reason I'd always go train is because I knew my enemy was training. But when I stopped fighting professionally, I thought, well, I, what enemy do I have? And I realized I had to create my own. So when I don't feel like going to the gym, I imagine I've built my own enemy. I won't even list all the things that my enemy has. He has a whole bunch of shit I don't have. And he's a, a, he would be an impossible, nearly impossible person to be. But when I sit and I don't feel like going to the gym, I know my enemy's training because he trained no matter what, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's pissed off or if there's traffic or it's raining or he's tired, my enemy trains. When I see a girl and she's beautiful but all her friends are there and I'm afraid they're going to laugh at me, my enemy wouldn't give a f he'd go over there anyway. That's who he is. He's a man. So when I understood who I was truly battling against him, you have two choices. You either rise up to try and take him on or you become a little pussy. You have the choice. Do I want to lose to this man, this man I've created? and I've built, do I want to lose to him or do I want to beat him or compete with him? And you have to make a choice and you sit there and go, well, I know that the person I created in my mind, my, my arch nemesis would go over there and he'd talk to all the girls. And he'd fuck two of them, let alone one. This is an extremely important facet. And for the next six weeks, we're going to be doing lots of things that are going to revert back to the enemy that you've created. So you'd have to put genuine effort into putting together this person. You have to imagine everything about them. From start to finish, you have to imagine standing next to them. If you were standing next to this guy right now with no shirt on, who would girls want to, who would people respect? And the crazy thing about all of this is that this person is you. This person is you. It's just you with a little bit of a different path or a different take on life. It's you who's the person who does whatever he's supposed to do regardless of how he feels. It's you with an iron mind. This is the exact point. The reason creating this enemy is so important and the reason viewing how he, viewing him and seeing how he sees the world and, and understanding how important and powerful this person is, is important is because that person is you. That person is you who does what he's supposed to do without fail. That's all it is. And when you truly, truly put this person together and you truly, truly understand it, and you find out what you could be and you find out what you're battling against, you're going to become far more difficult to demotivate. It's going to be much harder for someone to say to you, don't go to the gym, because you're going to know, well, my, my enemy, this guy, give him a name, whatever. This dude's going to the gym. That's why he looks how he looks. And that's who I'm being compared to. So I have to go to the gym. Oh yeah, but you know, I'm tired. Well, you don't go then. My training partner doesn't want to go. Fine, you don't go. I am going. I'm not the guy who's going to let this man beat me. And you have to start comparing yourself to this guy in every single facet. I still do it to this day. I compare my bank balance to this guy's and he's killing me. I compare my body to this guy's, he's killing me. I compare so many things about myself. You guys may look at me and go, oh, Tate, millionaire, girls, this, that, that, that. I'm still comparing myself to this person I've created. And I know that I'm losing. And that's what drives me forward. That's why I don't miss the gym. That's how I find a way to make money. That's how I do whatever it takes to succeed because I know who I'm battling against. Most of you guys have no enemy. You have no enemy. Or you have an enemy which is somebody else. You're looking at Justin Bieber or Drake or something. That, that's not going to motivate you. That's pointless. It's not going to help you. Or you have no enemy at all, you have a support structure around you and you have people who say, oh, you're great just the way you are, you know, you're beautiful just the way you are, and you're sitting there and living in your little comfort zone, little bitch. Put this enemy together from start to finish, and when you truly put this list together, you truly create this person and truly understand that it could be you, it's going to be far more difficult to stop you doing what you need to do in the future. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. You can give a, it doesn't matter what it is, if you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack, table.
put it in front of a quitter. You will never have a table. He'll look at it, it's just long, and he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds, and I've always spoke about it, and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say, like, depression isn't real. People say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can o I've only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on them because in jail, you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a Romanian jail cell. We're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mind fuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing, he was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G? Let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So Tonight, it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you. In, in terms of mental struggles, yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. There's too much on our shoulders and we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think, for everybody else, because there was a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns, I think it is the problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail, and they just pick you up and you go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding your kids? Who's your wife sleeping? Like, like it, life gets hard for all the external things you could no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems, and when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside, and I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were going to kill me. Even to this day, if they shoot me right now, everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to function. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how quickly you used to cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> You're just like, kick them out of the way that was kind of bad but um not knowing when i'm gonna get out 
that was bad. Having my name slandered all around the world, that was bad. Not knowing how people are reacting to it. Like the, my first time, month in jail, I didn't know if people believed this garbage or not. I, I had no access to the internet. I didn't see anything. There was a lot about it that was hard, but um, I, I have to believe it's gonna make me a better person. Why else would I, why else did I go? What did I go for, to waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must have gone to jail to become a better person. I must have learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience and perhaps as a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing and uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. Not because I'm guilty, because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end? There are moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed by life, by people, by your own circumstances, by struggles. We all get knocked down in every aspect of life. Life has a way of humbling you. Life will make you shut up. Life will mute you. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. At times you won't want to come out the house. At times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why what's wrong. I don't know. Just leave me alone. You will cry. You're going to fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. But it's okay. It goes with the territory. It's a part of the deal. The real challenge of growth comes when you get knocked down. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You're going to ask somebody for some money. He's going to tell you no. That's just dirt. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. If somebody came and knocked you down, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if I come back a week later and you're still on the ground, we got a problem. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. The way you were born, what happened to you is not your fault. But doggone it, you're still on the ground after 20 years? See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. If you get knocked down, there's nothing you can do about it. But getting back up has every single thing to do with you. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You are not the only person that's been through a divorce, boo. Get over it. You're not the first one they let go of. You won't be the last one. The question is, what you gonna do about it? I'm not gonna be a volunteer victim. You can decide that you're gonna stand up to life. I just need you to identify what your pain is. And then I need you to ask yourself what you're gonna do about it. And maybe you've been knocked down in your life and it seems like, hey, the fight is over. It is not over unless you quit. You can permit it to let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. You have a choice to either give up or get up. You got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. You have to learn to turn and look at every obstacle as an opportunity. I will not give up. Every time I get knocked down, I will get back up and I will succeed. I love myself enough not to be trapped in the same doggone spot for the rest of my life. No pain, no gain. Pain has a purpose. Your pain ain't permanent. It might last for a second. It might last for a minute. It might last for months. But sooner or later, if you do not surrender, if you do not give up, it will subside. Don't go through it. Grow through it. And as pain leaves your body, guess what's going to take its place? Success. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. And if you're going through a battle right now, it's only because you're building something.
Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine you? Your pain is going to be a part of your prize. I challenge you to push yourself. You want affirmation, look yourself in the mirror and say, I think I can, I know I can. You've got to decide to be relentless. You've got to decide never to give up. Do whatever it takes. You your biggest driver. You've got to find some reasons within yourself that will give you the stamina when life catches you on the blind side to keep on calling and coming back again and again and again. You see, the fight's not over if you've been knocked down. It's only over if you quit. Because life is a fight. It's a fight for integrity, your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. So every morning, I've got to wake up and I've got to fight. You're going to quit or you're going to make it to yourself. You're going to quit or you're going to make it to your goal. So you can stop waiting for it. You can stop wishing for it. And you can get on with the rest of your life. I got to fight for my dreams. I got to fight for character. I got to fight for integrity. When you get to the point where enough is enough, doors start opening, opportunities start happening. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. All I'm saying is don't quit. I didn't say don't rest. Mentally, you can stay connected. But to win fights, you got to have stamina. You got to be ready to fight and bounce back. You better not feel sorry for yourself. You better get up and fight. And some of you are not successful because every single time you run up against a trial, you stop. I need you to match whatever effort the enemy is putting up. Match the doggone effort. I'm going to think. I'm going to execute. And I'm going to win. And that's how you get to the next level. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. It's when you have nothing left. It's when you depleted all your money. When you have nothing left, that's when it's showtime. At the end of pain is your promise. So stop crying about it and use your energy to get through it. When you find a way out of no way, when you find breath that you don't have, when you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. I cannot stop what happens to me, but I can dictate how I respond. I invested too much to quit. So when life happens, I don't just sit there and cry. I brought back. Because all of us, if you live long enough, will go through a period of feeling so overwhelmed. Sooner or later you feel, oh God, just get me out of this. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that, but that's not the truth. The truth is, you got to find something within. Life's going to whip your butt. Life is going to bully you. Stop crying. Let it hit you. But don't let it punk you. And when you find out what your why is, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. And I'm telling you right now, don't give up. Don't give in. Get through it. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care what you're going through. If you're not dead, he ain't through with you yet. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you're still in the game. You're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up. As long as there's breath in your nostrils, you still can win. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And you will promise me that from this day forward, you will not be defeated. Somebody holler, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> Don't count me out. I may be sick, I may be crazy, I may be confused, but I'm not dead yet. Some people live in the cemetery of their failures. And I want to say to somebody who's fallen, or everybody hates you, and everybody walked away from you, don't live where they left you. Nudge somebody and tell them I will not die here. Whatever it takes for me to get out, I got to get out of here. I will not die on drugs. I will not die in depression. I will not die where you met me. Number one motivating thing for me, and I'm just being honest, was I was sick and tired of being poor. My mother was poor, my father was poor, my brothers and sisters were poor. I lived in a poor neighborhood, we lived in a poor house. And I was, you know, like at Christmas time, my father would put us in the car and take us out to the suburbs to see the Christmas lights. And I would see these big houses, man. I told my father, I said, Dad, I said, why don't we get one of these houses? He said, boy, I ain't got no money for this kind of house. He said, but if you work hard, you can make some money, you can buy you one of these houses. My motivation was to buy a big house 
so I could put up Christmas lights. And I always dreamed of buying my mother and father a real house. And before they died, I was able to do all of that. You have to find a dream that's so big that it overwhelms all of your fears and causes you to never give up. Always go to something bigger than yourself. I'm wondering if you've been defeated because you have been giving yourself wholly to something that was too small to hold you. Are you trying to take a bath in a bowl? Are you not guilty of immersing yourself into things that were too small to hold your vision? Why do you keep imagining buying a house? Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. You got to start believing in your imagination.